from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Robert Ecker, Mr. Parsons' secretary. You telephone this office for an appointment with Mr. Parsons. That's right. I'm an investigator, Mr. Ecker. I was sent here by Eastern Casualty and Trust. We understand David Parsons is missing. I want to talk to Mr. Parsons Sr. about it. Oh. Well, Mr. Parsons Sr. isn't in the office today. He's home ill. This is pretty important, Mr. Ecker. Maybe I better call him at home. Why don't you come to the office? I'll try to arrange to take you out there. I don't want to be a lot of trouble. There'd be more trouble if I didn't. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Casualty and Trust Company, number 25 Yardley Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Calicles matter. Expense account item one, $200.05, airfare and incidentals, Hartford to Los Angeles. I arrived at midnight, went straight to the Beverly Hilton, had a good night's sleep, and woke up to an early spring heat wave. By 9 o'clock, I had placed my call to Parsons Stocks and Bonds. At 10 o'clock, I met Robert Ecker in person. He was a man about my age with a thin face and good clothes. Judging from his office, the job of secretary was a pretty responsible one. I don't quite understand this, Mr. Dollar. What made you think that Mr. Parsons Jr. is missing? Is he around? You mean, is he in town? Yeah, is he in town? Is he around? Can I see him? Well, none of us exactly knows where he is, but he's not what you'd call missing. Well, now, that depends on how you look at it, Mr. Ecker. We understand David Parsons hasn't been seen for ten days. Is my information wrong? Well, no, no, what you say is true. You mean you're here to look into the matter? That's about it. May I say something? Sure. When you're speaking of David Parsons in front of his father, Mr. Parsons Sr., I suggest that you don't use that word missing. I'll try to remember that. The connotation might upset him. I'm certain he doesn't regard Mr. Parsons' absence in the missing sense. Maybe you can tell me how he does regard it. I'm afraid I can't. Mr. Parsons Sr. doesn't confide in me. How about David Parsons' wife? Sorry. How about your own opinion? I'd rather keep my opinions to myself, Mr. Dollar. There's nothing personal, but uh, Mr. Parsons Sr. is very adamant about certain matters. In other words, uh, Mr. Parsons Sr. does all of the thinking for publication. So to speak, yes. What concern does the uh, Eastern... Casualty and Trust Company have in this matter? Yeah, so what is the bonding company's concern? $100,000. It was an automatic write-up on David Parsons, Jr. when he entered the firm. I still don't understand. David Parsons had access to great amounts of money and transferable bonds here. That's why we're responsible, Mr. Ecker. Is that an inference? If it sounds like I'm worried that David Parsons might have walked off with some money or some bonds, it's an inference. (laughs) That's rather ridiculous, isn't it? I don't know whether it is or not, Mr. Ecker. I regard it that way. Mr. Parsons is worth a considerable amount of money. A million dollars would be a conservative estimate of his fortune. His father, of course, is, well, Mr. Parsons Sr. Yes, we're well aware of Mr. Parsons' holding. But sometimes things aren't what they seem. You know what I mean? No, I'm afraid I don't know exactly what you mean, Mr. Dollar. Well, now, uh... Take these, for instance. Mr. Dollar. Take these. Just what? Here, these copies of Eastern Casualty's policies on your desk, Mr. Ecker. Now, let's see. You call me about nine. It's a little after ten now. That gave you an hour to dig them out, study them over, and answer for yourself the exact questions you've been making me answer. Isn't that about it, Mr. Ecker? Yes. Yes, I'd say that's just about it, Mr. Dollar. Robert Ecker drove me out to the Bel Air home of David Parsons, Sr. On the way, he spoke of the weather, the situation in Algiers, uh, the trouble he had making reservations for weekends in Palm Springs, and the low fuel consumption of his new Studebaker Golden Hawk. He avoided very carefully any further mention of David Parsons, Jr., the missing son. I put a couple of direct questions to him, which he answered indirectly by referring me to Mr. Parsons, Sr. So I let it go at that. Jenny? Jenny? Somebody must be around. You said your phone. I did. Jenny? 
Oh, hello. Hello, Robert. Nobody around? No one so far. They must be upstairs. He's been at it today. Called me over here an hour ago. Oh, I'm Mrs. Parsons. I'm Johnny Dollar. How do you do? I beg your pardon. You shouldn't, Robert. It was purposeful. Uh, Mrs. Parsons... I'm the one you're not supposed to meet, Mr. Dollar. I'm David's wife. I just received orders from upstairs that this matter will be handled upstairs. Is that so? Oh, yes, that's quite so. My father-in-law feels that he has extraordinary competence in this matter. As in all matters, huh, Robert? We'd better get along, Mr. Dollar. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. I mean about your father-in-law handling it. That makes very little difference, Mr. Dollar. It's my husband who's missing, but his son. You're a, a policeman or a detective, aren't you? In a way, yes. You look like a very charming man, Mr. Dollar. Becker! Becker, is that you down there? Just a moment, Mr. Parsons. Hurry up! <laughs> you may have to practice some charm on him. Thank you for the tip, Mrs. Parsons. Not at all. It was nice to have met you. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Mrs. Parsons. We'd better get up there. Ecker! Robert Ecker led me upstairs into a massive bedroom that could only have been decorated for a massive old man, which is exactly what David Parsons Sr. turned out to be. Six and a half feet tall, I guessed at it, since he was stretched out in bed. He had a pair of cold black eyes and white hair liberally sprinkled with gray. He spilled a briefcase full of papers and documents off the bed, punched his pillow around, and glared hard at me. What's his name? This is Mr. Dollar, Mr. Parsons. You see if he had any credentials? No, sir. Well, I... find out! Mr. Dollar. Sure, sure. Here, look these over. I look them over. Hand them to me. Yes, Mr. Parsons. They could be forgeries. He could be a newspaper reporter, something like that. Go downstairs and use the hall phone. Call this company and see if they have anyone named Johnny Dollar working for them. Hurry it up. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Those credentials are genuine. You know it and I know it, Mr. Parsons. I'm not waiting around here while you call Boston and talk to someone there you won't believe either. Now, I'm at the Beverly Hilton. You call me when you've made up your mind to talk about this matter. Fine. Now, get out. I got in town last night and contacted your office first thing. I wanted to talk to you about it first for several reasons. One, you're David Parsons' father. It's your company, not his, that can be jeopardized in a situation like this. Two, you seem the logical man to see to clear up the matter easily. Now that I've seen you, I'm not so sure of that. I'll have to go to somebody else. Wait a minute. What do you mean, go to somebody else? I mean, I'm not going to sit in a hotel room cooling my heels waiting for you to call me. I have to find out about this, and there are other people to talk to. Your son's wife, the whole household. <laughs> they wouldn't let you in. The police, if I have to. I'd break you. I'd break you in half. Then I'd get pretty mad, and both halves of me would figure this thing out if it took a million years and a million dollars. Ecker. Yes, sir? Get out of here. Yes, sir. You've got five minutes. I've got five minutes and ten minutes and a million minutes if I need them. We have a report your son's been missing for ten days now. One of our brokers reported it. He happened to be one of your son's clients. Missing. All right, where is he? How would I know? I take that to mean you don't know. Do you have any ideas? Of course not. Have you had an audit of your books since he disappeared? What? Have you had an audit? Is there anything missing? Bonds, cash in the company? Ecker! Ecker! Throw this bum out of here and make sure he bounces a couple of times. Mr. Parsons. Throw him out! I've got you by a good 25 pounds, Ecker. Maybe you'd better leave, Mr. Dollar. I think I'll stay. Oh, if I could get out of this bed, I'd do it my... Ecker! Run along, Mr. Ecker. He'll calm down. I can wait him out. You leave without throwing him out and you're fired. Throw him out! I'll wait for you downstairs, Mr. Dollar. <clears throat> All right. Sit down. What day is today? Friday. It was a week ago Tuesday. David left the house, according to his wife, and that's the last anyone saw him. No word, nothing since then. No police? Of course not, no police. I can hear you, I can hear you. Why? You know why as well as I do. An investment broker missing. What the papers wouldn't do with that? What's been going on? Nothing. We've been waiting to hear from him. No one's done anything? What is there to do that won't bring out the press? Look, I'm not worried about the press. I'm worried about your son, Mr. Parsons. Whatever happened to him has had a ten-day start, and nothing's been done about it. Now, how about the books? What about them? Have you had an audit? Now, look here, you Keep young... Keep your voice now, will you? I ask you a simple question. Have you found anything missing? I haven't looked. Where are you going? Well, if what you say is true, no one's seen or heard of David Parsons for ten days, then I'm going to get some help. What help? Police. I don't want any police in on this. How much does your responsibility come to? $100,000. I'll post it in cash. 
You'll what? I'll post that amount of money and assume your liability, if there is a liability. You'll never get a fair offer than that. I don't want this matter to get into the papers. Well? Look, Mr. Parsons, we have assumed liability, and we can't transfer it at this date. It's, it's out of the question. So let's start our planning from there. I met Mrs. Parsons downstairs. I understand she's not supposed to meet me or see me. Now, is that right? Yeah. Well, you better fix up that part of it. That's so? Yeah. Suppose I don't. I'll see her anyhow. Get out of here! He was looking for something to throw when I stepped out the door and walked down the hall to the stairway. At the foot of the stairs, I looked around for Robert Eckert, who wasn't around. I found my hat by the door, and then I ran into Mrs. Parsons again. Mr. Dollar. Yes? What's been decided? What's he going to do about David? Well, it's pretty hard to say what he's going to do about anything. What are you going to do? I was going to drive over to your house this afternoon and ask you to go to the police and make out a missing persons report. If you refuse to do that, I was going to the police myself and ask their help. Oh. Do you think that's the thing to do? I mean, a missing person report? Yep, I think that's the thing to do. I'll be home later this afternoon. He might hear us. All right. You say two o'clock? Fine. Cool off? Oh, for a second or two. <laughs> Some museum piece he is. Be careful of him, Mr. Dollar. He'll break your heart. He's your kind. You're his dish of meat. Yeah. I didn't pay much attention to that remark from Robert Ecker. I thought about Sven Gali and Rasputin and a couple of fellas like that. I didn't think of Parsons Sr. in the same class with them. But I should have guessed it. Eckers trying to tell me, but I just wouldn't listen. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, some more facts about how the Earth swallowed a man. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>